Let's start off the example series with the transformer. But look what we have here, state lens law. Don't just say oppose a change. You got to talk about the whole sentence nicely. So how would you describe that? You can say the induced EMF, you know, Faraday's law is E proportional to D phi DT, which is the rate of change of flux. But Lenz came along and said, hang on a second, oppose the change. So I symbolically put a negative sign there to remind ourselves that we are opposing the change in flux. And that's what the EMF does. So you can say that the induced EMF, or if you have a complete loop, then you have induced EMF or current produces some kind of effect or some kind of feel. A magnetic field. Ah. So produces a, a effects or feel to oppose the change that caused the induced EMF. So the change that caused it. That's all you can say. Cause it. Okay, two marks. One is talking about induced EMF produce some kind of effect. What's the effect? What does it do? To oppose the change. Ah, this is where your oppose the change come in. A1. So be careful, uh, if you just say oppose the change, uh, you won't get an A1 mark without your M1. The M1 links to the A1 mark. So you have to talk about the method in order to get the accuracy mark. So what do we have here? A, a simple transformer. Okay. A soft iron. Ooh. Why does it say a laminated soft iron core? What does that mean? They will ask us very soon. Anyway, this is our mutual inductance of two coils. They are linked together because of this soft iron core. Or this soft iron core strengthens the links, la, the flux through the core. So explain why the iron core is made of iron. Wait, wait, wait. Explain why the core is made of iron. Why not some other material? Like plastic or copper or something else. So the reason why we use iron as the, the core for all these kind of transformers and coils is to increase mainly the flux linkage. So that's the first reason to increase flux linkage because these iron cores make the flux or the magnetic field stronger so that I mean so that you can travel all the way here and it's still quite strong lah. so increase the magnetic flux linkage in here so you boost the magnetic field there's also another reason why we use this iron core Iron particularly because it's very easy to magnetize iron and demagnetize. So there's no, it doesn't have a memory too much about the magnetism. So magnetize, then the current change direction, okay, then demagnetize and magnetize in the opposite direction. So no pro, it has no trouble doing that. So we choose that as the core for all these alternating current, alternating fields. So it's another reason you could say is it is easily magnetized and demagnetized. And demagnetize. must say both. Because some objects are very easy to get magnetized, but very hard to demagnetize. So N is an important word here. Any of these is just one mark. Lah. So if you, you write one of these, you already get a mark. B1. Okay. Why is the iron core laminated? Question number two. What is laminated? Laminated means something like... Do I have my picture? Where's my picture? There it is. A laminated core. So instead of one single chunk of metal, let me see if I can draw a single chunk. Single chunk of metal would look something like that. Ay, ay, ay. So that's my crude drawing of a single chunk. If it's one solid chunk, what's the problem here? Yeah, you have a flux traveling this way, let's say, between two coils. Uh, then where will the current be? There will be all kinds of current that will generate this way wall. Mini mini current. Eh, wait, correct direction. Eh, wrong direction. Sorry, sorry. Ah. So you would have current in the other direction a lot in the in the metal, and we don't like that. Why is that? What the, what's the name for all these mini currents inside here? Eddy currents. That's what we call them. So we don't like eddy currents. Why are there eddy currents here? They cause energy loss. They cause the 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 core to get very hot. And we don't like that. It's dangerous. It just, it's not great. So these eddy currents are a problem. So to solve them, we laminate the core so that it is instead of one solid chunk, you have many, 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 many slices now. So now the current cannot say, oh, hey, I want to go like that. Cannot. No passing through. You stay in your lane. 
So yes, they still can be Eddie Carrots, but they'll be tiny, like maybe like that. Like that, within each lamination slice. Okay, so that this diagram kind of summarizes it is, if you have a solid core, you can have lots of eddy currents, cause heating, energy loss, all kind of stuff. But if you have laminated core, the current is just limited to their own slice. Ah. They cannot just cross over like that. We don't want this. No. Eddy currents ruin the day. So the laminated is to prevent eddy currents. So how do we talk about that? Well, let's return to this. So why do we use a laminated core? If you want your device to be very efficient, your transformer, well, you can say to reduce energy lost as heat. Well, the iron core will get hot. Lah. Heat. Uh, then you must also explain two marks for this one. Oh, so this is, don't just say energy loss. Say why? Wh wh why? Why is energy loss? Energy loss as heat due to eddy currents. In the core. Okay, there we go. Now that's a more complete sentence. You want to talk about uh, why laminate to produce energy loss, but also where does why is there energy loss in the first place? Eddy currents in the core. So you must have your method mark again to get the A one mark. If you will just say eddy currents, what? Well, how does eddy currents affect anything? Energy loss. Oh, okay, okay. Last part, uh, this one this is kind of duplicated down here as well. So I'm going to move up here. Ha, huh, there. An EMF is induced in the secondary coil of the transformer. Oh, we're looking at a different thing now. Oh, wait, never mind. Primary, secondary. So you're inducing EMF, which is what we usually do. Induced EMF. So that means you're going to send an AC input here. So the current keeps changing direction and the flux keeps changing direction. So you induce EMF. Ooh, okay. Explain how. Oh man, it's explain question in magnetic induction. It's going to be many marks, four marks, right? Explain how a current in primary coil can cause this induced EMF. So you need to explain the whole process. Why when you have a current here, you can create an EMF on this end. How do you link this to? What is the story? So the story, you have to remember the four steps that we always talk about. First, what the flux is happening here? What's the change in flux? So step one, is there a change in flux? Yes, when there's current, there's flux. So something like this, like this. Okay, and this flux links together both, both solenoids. Flux linkage. This is the reason why it's called flux linkage. It links together all these coils in there. So we can say there is a change in flux because current is alternating. Then we need to talk about Faraday's law. Oh, if there's a change in flux, means there's uh, EMF induced in the second secondary coil. Uh, just right here, E two lah. Step three, maybe you want to mention Lenz law if you want to. Sure, we could mention Lenz law. Opposing the change. Step four, if you want to mention any kind of uh, energy losses. Do we need to mention energy loss? I don't know. You've got to double check the question carefully. But this is generally the structure. Lah. For most explained questions, just talk about all the things if you're not sure how to answer. Okay, let's go and talk about this. Change in flux. Let's start off with that. So explain how. Let's go. We're going to say first that there is a alternating current or voltage. So you can say the alternating current in the primary coil. I'll just write here, primary coil causes a changing flux. Because current and flux is related. How are they related? Flux is related to B. B is related to I. Hence, flux is related to current. Flux generated by a current. Okay, that just that's just flux. Uh, what was I? Alternate current causes a changing uh causes a flux, changing flux. Flux where in the core. So you want to be specific for this setup, because the, the coil is wrapped around the core, ma. So there's a flux in the core. 
Okay, but that's in the first coil. How about the second coil? Both coils are linked together by the magnetic flux linkage. So let's also mention that. So this um, so causes a changing flux in the core, which is linked. Or which links, actually. What English is this? <laughs> this flux links the secondary coil. So now you have drawn the connection between the primary coil and the secondary coil. Okay, what next? We talk about flux. Faraday's law, change in flux, induced EMF. Okay, okay, let's talk about that. So I'm going to write hmm, down here, I guess. So therefore, a changing flux, because it's alternating, a changing flux through who? In the secondary coil. So now we're talking about secondary coil. Induces an EMF in the secondary coil. Um, do you want to throw in lens? If you're not sure during exam whether they will give marks or not, I just throw it in. Okay, okay, we're not sure we throw in. So induce an EMF to oppose the change that caused it. So this just just in case, you know, just throw in some lens law thing inside there. To oppose the change that caused the e induced EMF. Okay, pretty satisfied. They didn't talk about energy. They just want you to go the story from current to induce EMF. I guess we already reached that story. So actually there's four marks here. One comes if you know or you knew that you need an alternating current in the primary coil. So this one is your first mark. So when you have an alternating current, what do you have? A changing flux in the core. Right. Number two. This one. Number three. Well, that's in the first coil. How about how does it connect to the second coil? They are linked. Magnetic flux linkage. So this flux links the both coils together. So if you talk about the linking or it's linked to the second coil, that's the M1 mark. So if there's a changing flux in both coils, what happens? Induce EMF. That's the last part. Induce EMF in the secondary coil. There. Unfortunately, the mask scheme didn't give anything for Lenz Law in this time. But it's okay. We are ready. In case there's a mark for Lenz Law, we already talk about opposing change. Okay. So that is an introduction of how you can think of transformers. Lots of explanation in this chapter. Make sure you know how to write what they are looking for. If you're not sure, then you think about the four steps. Uh. Step one, change in flux. Where is it? Uh, here. Step two, Faraday's law. Apply in this particular scenario. Step three, Lenz law. Just mention it if you're not sure whether or not they'll give you marks for it. And step four, if there's anything they ask about energy, mention energy. Heat dissipated. Eddy currents. Throw everything inside there. Okay. Energy usually is related to con any energy conversion. Energy loss. Uh, if you need to mention eddy currents, just throw in the eddy currents to cover all the ground, just in case there's marks. Okay, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next example. We'll look at more at mutual inductance when there are two coils at work.